Hello, how are you? And welcome back to Le Office. Uh, I hope you're having a good day. Can I ask just one favour before I go any further? Can you please subscribe? I don't know if it's this side, if it's this side. But please subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. We're nearly at 10,000. And the comments you guys put in are brilliant. And I'm loving the interaction. So please keep that coming. Um, and if you don't mind, hit subscribe. And I will try and kiss you at some point. You might not want that. Don't unsubscribe. Um, but yeah, I want to just take a few moments to talk about the, the news going around this morning on Lioness manager Serena Wiegmann um, after the chief exec of the FA um, spoke out yesterday, um, Mark Bullingham, some interesting comments on Wiegmann, the idea of her possibly replacing Gareth Southgate, that the consideration could be there for her to get a job in the men's game for England. And I've worked at TalkSport this morning, so I've been up early and I've had lots of different opinions on this. And now I just want to be like, Meh. let it all out. Um, and I, I see last, last year when they won the Euros, I was pushing that we, we need to have Emma Hayes in men's football. You need to get Serena Wiegmann in men's football. And then time goes on a bit. I'm like, women's football is so incredible just now. You need to keep those personalities, those managers there in front of you. However, now that these, you know, these statements have been put out there from the chief executive of the FA, it's now something that we all now need to consider, that England fans need to consider, that men in football need to consider. And that's where Pandora's box opens and everything runs a little bit wild. Um, certainly, as I said there, a couple of years ago, last year, I would have been a lot more, um, just do it, give everyone the opportunity. Everyone's there's an opportunity and I, and I do still feel a lot like that. But now I'm working in sport and you're seeing everything a little bit more as a whole. I'm, I'm not, uh, yeah, more, more as, as a whole. I'm trying to take on all the different opinions and see everybody's view. So please, you can let me know yours in the comments. Um, we can all agree that Serena Wiegmann is top class manager to win the Euros, to make it then to a World Cup final, to then win the Euros with England and now make it to another World Cup final. She's becoming extremely decorated. Um, she's likeable. She's loved by the press. She's straight talking and she's tactically astute. I think she has all the key ingredients to be a brilliant manager in men's football. But the one thing that we haven't seen is this before. So it's quite hard to, not for not me, not for many of you probably, but for society to wrap their head around a woman coming into the man's game, as it's quite often still referred to. Um, we have the women's game, we have the man's game, and I'm not here to compare them both. Um, that's not something we need to do at all just now, but I think it's something that we will see certainly soon, especially now Mark Billingham's put those quotes out there. Um, just to make it clear, Serena Wiegmann would be considered to succeed Gareth Southgate as England men's manager if she wanted the job. As Football Association Chief Executive Mark Bullingham admitted, um, he is open to appointing a woman. Um, he went on to say, why does it always have to be the best man for a job? It should be the best person for a job. If it's a woman, then it's a woman, which makes me seriously think that the FA see her as a good candidate to replace Gareth Southgate, who is now heading into eight years as manager. I think by the time the next tournament comes round, it's going to be eight years. Maybe don't quote me on that, but he's been there for quite some time. You know, there's been the Euro heartache. There was the World Cup so recently um, and everybody expects the best from England. And the difference now, when you look at the women's game, I certainly didn't expect them to get to this stage of the World Cup due to the injuries and the change in the squad. Sorry, my, my squeaky chair. Um, but I think I look at the, the management and I go, you know, she she's becoming a genius. Um, and putting this video up now is, is early because I want to get my thoughts out now because come Monday, if they're are to lose, the Lionesses are to lose to Spain, this story's not going to be going around. However, if she does win and the Lionesses win on Sunday, this will be one of the top stories again come Monday. Um, and I don't know about you, but I feel last year when the Euros were here, um, it was quite often defending women's football. That's what the conversations quite often were about. Um, defending why everybody should be excited about this. Defending why women's sports gone from here to here. Um, defending women managers possibly working in men's football one day. Defending why the standard is different. Whereas this time around this tournament, and bear in mind it's been a quick year, it doesn't feel like that at all. And I don't know if it's because... We're not on home soil. When I say we, we're not, you know, we're not where we are used to being. I know there's a lot of you watching all over the world. 
and Australians and New Zealanders watching this just now will be looking and going the beauty of having this tournament in our own country to how it's going to grow the leagues and how it's going to change financially, how there was going to be a lot more investment and love um, for women's football in the leagues in Australia and New Zealand. That's so important and I actually, even though yes, it can be abolic for us all to travel across the other side of the world, but each country deserves their opportunity to have that, you know, if they've got it. And again, there can be a lot of disagreements on that. But when I, when Ireland qualified, I was like, I'm going to, to Australia, I'm booking and I'm going, I'm going to try and work and get as much work as I can to try and pay it off because it's an expensive trip. And I look at the amount of fans who have been out there and I'm like, women's football is like that now. You will travel, you will go and support your team. Um, and like I say, the Aussies and New Zealand, they, they needed that moment. They needed that time, this tournament. Uh, it meant the world to them, as did the Euros last year for the Lionesses with it being in their home country. Now that the Lionesses are out there, I'm like, okay, they can, genu they can genuinely go all the way. And the Spain situation is so very interesting. However, coming back to Serena Wiegmann, you know me, I like to digress. If we don't, ever give a woman the opportunity to be a manager in the men's game, then how are we ever going to know? At the moment, it's so very much a lot of comments, you know, how could it possibly be? Um, how would men ever respect her in the, in the men's game? Players wouldn't tolerate her. She couldn't handle the egos. Um, she, the standard's not the same. She wouldn't be as fast as men. Like These are the, the kind of comments that I've been reading through uh, since the news broke out yesterday. If we don't try it, we will never know. And one thing I am a firm believer in, so much so now, is diversity. I've always been absolutely cool with diversity, but the reason I get to work and, and do this job is because diversity happens. It looks after everybody else. It shines a light on those that aren't getting the opportunity to work in certain sectors, it gives opportunities to, to those who, who wouldn't be considered as the norm to be in those opportunities and, and to be in those roles. And Serena Wiegmann, I think, could be the perfect fit. And I actually think that England doing it, you know, from the FA, instead of the likes of Emma Hayes replacing Potter at Chelsea, a club, you know, where the pressure's on week in, week out, the table never lies, all that kind of thing, you look and go, it, it, it could be an incredible amount of pressure. Whereas you look and go, coming in to work towards a major tournament, whereas where every year and a half, then the pressure is really on, is definitely something you look and go, Serena Vegan can deal with that, man. She's just gone to two finals back to back with a matter of months between, with players dropping like flies due to injuries. I think she would be more than capable. And the other thing to, to, to just remind ourselves as well is that She's the best coaching staff ever. She might choose other coaching staff. You would be equipped with the best of the best in whatever sector to work towards football. And the key for me here is she would be the manager. You manage people. You know, yes, she's tactically astute. Yes, she's got the best team around her helping her to make the changes, to offer the advice. But she manages people. And part of me genuinely believes that the reason Emma Hayes is so successful is because of her player management. Um, and she's spoken so clearly about that. She treats everybody with their individual moments and where they need that support. I don't know what Serena Wiegmann is like, if she's like that inside camp. It feels like her players don't often say much about moments like that. And as time goes on, we'll learn more. Um, but they all love her. They all absolutely love her and they all know where they stand. I think there's certain morals there and certain respect and appreciation there. There was a story in the paper today and that's just like... I don't know, I just I filled up a little bit reading it. And when Serena Wiegmann was seven, she wanted to play football so much that she cut her hair off to look like a boy and went and played football anyway. And her parents were like, yes, go and do it. We, we support you, go and play football. And then in one of her games, her goals were disallowed because she was a girl. And I look now in this day and age and it would just never happen. It would never happen. And you look at youngsters now, little boys and girls, who would grow up maybe one day seeing her as the England manager of the men's football. And I think it's the kind of, it's a wee bit of the last piece of diversity when it comes to football and football growing for men. Again, you want to keep the best managers. I like the idea of her maybe going to the US national team and, you know, what if she could get them back to winning ways or win a World Cup with them, then she would be truly elite if she's not already. Um, but yeah, I think this is a really interesting conversation and it's not one of speculation now. It's not one that we're just thrown out there like, could she manage the men's game? It's back page and front page news today.
It is all over the news. It's all in the back pages of the papers. If the chief exec of the FA is considering that, it means they are considering that. Um, and somebody put in a smart comment and it also means that they're considering Gareth Southgate to replace her as the women's manager. Again, I don't have a problem with that either. You know, I think Stina Beekman's done better than Gareth Southgate has done. And also look and go the, the set up of the FA, the investment, the back and the, the staff there. Um, everyone wants the best from England men and they've not got it. Whereas you're getting the best from England women. And I think that's down to Serena Vigman and of course the outstanding talent that they possess as well. Let me know your thoughts on this. It's something that you would like to see. Um, also, she deserves equal pay is the other subject that came up to um, in the news as well. Of course she does. Of course she does. If she can go and win you the World Cup, give her more. Give her more money. I mean, that is the rules of it all. Also now the the pay uh, from the FA as well coming out towards the Lionesses, it sounds like now that's going to change also. Um, Nike are going to give a million towards, I think, the, the FA to, to filter down towards the, the players as well to make sure that they get their cuts. So it's now looking like a pretty penny for the Lionesses. And you bet the bottom dollar there'll be backlash on that as well if people don't, don't want them getting it, more money. Just here we are, just embrace it now. This is women's football now. I heard Laura Woods yesterday on this morning saying that it's not talking about the women's game, it's just talking about football. And as we go into a final on Sunday with the Lionesses against Spain and Spain and everything that's going on there, do they not want to win the World Cup because of Jorge Vilda and it validates his place in that team with the dispute between the players and the manager? And then you look at England's story as well, and then them not being paid from their FA, you know, or, you know, that's still not being confirmed. It's changing. The world is changing, and one thing will change, and I'm sure it will be Serena Vigman to be the first manager of the man's game who's come from the women's game, who is a woman, and I would completely embrace it. Just, on, just before I let you go, um, somebody very high up, I'll say, had a chat with me and said there's no way men would tolerate it and, no, and like men would tolerate it and I thought what men players do we know who don't tolerate women I mean there's one thing that men in football have in common and that's women so why would they not tolerate a women's manager maybe there's a key ingredient like is it a maternal thing is it a little bit of, is there an element of that there's something missing that maybe the men would just completely embrace but I would love to now hear from a male player who would say I wouldn't turn away I wouldn't turn away a woman coach because she's a woman. I remember Jason Cundy actually saying on the sports bar one night on Talk Sport that they were all in shock one day when a female physio came in, you know, to Chelsea. They were like, this is new, but it doesn't mean the person doesn't get respect or they don't stand for it. You know, at one point you couldn't have female firefighters. That's changed. You know, there's, there's so much change in this day and age. Some people hate it and it feels like they're clinging on to the last remaining thing and that could be a woman in the man's game. And it feels, with these quotes, that this may change at some point. I'm all for it either way. I'm all for her to happily stay with the Lionesses. I'm all for her to go elsewhere and improve other teams. I'm all for it. But I actually think this could be a, a very interesting appointment if it were to happen. Let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching it and I'll see you at the final.